Pardon? Prayer. I'm going to pray. <laughs> I'm going to pray. You know, that's good to have a help me. Amen. Because sometimes I forget. But we are going to pray to God the Father. That's why we're here to worship him to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ via the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, I want everybody to relax because some of us in here are looking like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> there is no ghost. So you should be smiling. Amen. Let's pray. Those who can kneel, let's kneel as we pray. Father God, we thank you for your Sabbath day. We remember your Sabbath day. We are here in your house at your time. And Lord, we ask that you would hide our human frailties and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. For that's what we need. We need the Holy Spirit. Today, humanity needs to be connected with divinity. Lord, just like when you came here, Divinity was connected with humanity. So we need to be like you. We need you to guide us. And we know that all that you do on your Sabbath day in your house will be according to your blessing. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name and witness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, I think we're about ready. A firm foundation. Um... Just bear with me a little bit. I'm trying to get all these components all in place. <laughs> Amen. Now, what did you come here for? Be to be fed. Okay, well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope the Lord feed us both. Okay? Because you can't get something that you don't have. Amen. And I didn't write the Bible or the Spirit of Prophecy. So I always like to give that disclaimer. These are the words that were read to you and you are hearing from Philippians 3.17 to the 21st verse. And Paul was writing to the believers in Philippi. Okay? And he learned what I must learn and what you must learn that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Are you with me this morning? Is that your goal? Amen. We want to be restored back into the image of God. We want to do things timely, the way God would have us to do. We want to be righteous means we do it right, not wrong. But we have a problem. There's a, we have this thing that Paul called there's another law working in us. To will is there, but to do is another thing. We just can't seem to get this flesh under control at times. Amen? Mm. But by faith, we believe that God is in charge. Amen. The Bible says he is the author and finisher of our faith. And the scripture also says, through Christ, I can do all things. I like, the, I like the other text. It says, a lot of things that we need to do, the Bible says, with men, it is what? Impossible, but with God. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Are you excited that God is in charge? Oh, yes. Amen. So Paul was writing to believers because he is encouraging the new body of believers that we got to learn to do things right because God does not bless confusion. Are you with me? Amen. And so if we would be a saint in heaven, we must be a saint on earth because if by chance, which could never happen, we didn't get it right on earth and we was transported to heaven, we would be the most miserable people in heaven. Because we're not used to things being done right. 
The word of God says iniquity abound and people don't have that love for God. That 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 uh, stamina that they need. They want to do things canish. Y'all never heard that word have you? <laughs> canish means they think that God will accept whatever they give him. Now, Cain was clearly told what God wanted. But he said, ah, God ain't concerned about this. He's not that strict. He's not this. He's not that. Sure, he will accept what I bring him. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians have that same attitude. And like God didn't accept Cain's offering, I don't want to be the first to tell you, God is not going to accept our offering if we deviate from what he has said. Now we're in a serious crisis here on planet Earth, but the devil is working to make everything look pleasant so we can enjoy this worldly journey. But don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. The Bible says, by peace, he shall destroy many in the book of Daniel. Yesterday, when I was at home, I was preparing for today. I got a call from my daughter. And you know it's real bad on planet Earth when the undertaker dies. A gentleman in New Jersey who was a mortician, I've seen him put, in my life, spent a lot of people to sleep. And now he's asleep. So we are reminded, and I'm reminded, that the last enemy, did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. The last enemy, I'm sure some of y'all have lost love ones. I lost my mother, father, on and on I can go, and so can you. And it's not a home going, and it's not a celebration. The devil is trying to turn death into a nice thing so people just, they, you know, at funerals, they be laughing and joking and talking about what this person did and what they didn't did. But they forget the reason they are there is because of sin. It's because of sin that the wages of sin is still death. And we as Christians, we call death an enemy. Amen? Amen. That's what it is. It's the enemy. And Jesus and the Father so loved us that they put a plan of salvation in. And you and I have the awesome task of trying to get people to accept the truth. Because if they accept the truth, they will be privy with salvation. You could offer the truth in books and tracts and Bible study and everything to people, but people don't know the value of it. They just don't know the value of it. And you and I must recognize this. That's why Paul says, he says, for many walk of whom I have told you often, now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. You might don't think you are an enemy, but if you haven't given your life to Jesus, the Bible says if you be a friend of this world, you are an enemy of who? God. Of God. We don't look at that. Jesus says, you cannot, brothers and sisters, serve two masters. It's impossible. Either you will love the one and hate the other. So, you know where we are going. We're going to offer to you the plan of salvation. Okay? And that's what Paul is doing. He's writing to the, to the believers, to the saints, 
in Philippi trying to encourage them to do things right. However, you might as well get aware and get used to it that there are some people, no matter what God says, like Cain, they are determined to do things their way. And so you and I, when we see this occur, we weep, or should we, or should have we, because we know whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. Oh, we forget that as Christians. Be not ye conformed to this world. Let's, let's talk a little bit. We don't know what that means. Let me give you a crash course. Happy Mother's Day. Why do you so focus on Mother's Day on the day that the world says? Happy Father's Day, Merry Christmas, and on and on it goes. But is that what the Bible says? Is that what the Bible says? We know from the Bible that Mother's Day is every day. Honor your mother and your father that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Amen? Amen. 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 Mother and Father's Day is every day for the Christian. Okay? And if it's not in here, what is it? Call it right. What is it? It's man's tradition. But it's also error. Because the word says, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, you might not know this, but before Jesus comes, there's going to be a revival and a reformation. You know, we can't take this stuff to heaven, in case you didn't know. Marvel not that I say unto you and me, we must be born again. No, 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 don't be Nicodemus. No, you don't have to go back to your mother's womb. <laughs> Amen. 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 With man, that is impossible. But with God, it's possible. And let me just, let me just, I know y'all, some of y'all know some of these things, but I like to be real basic, okay? We must change these characters that we have. Okay, we look good, very pious, so forth and so forth and so forth. But I know, and you know, if I come down your aisle and stomp on your foot, your real character will come out. And I dare not spit in your face because you'll be awakened to see, oh, God was right. I must be born again. Only God and those who are restored into his image can accept that. Amen. The, the Jews believe in the eye for eye, tooth for tooth. You slap me, I slap you back. Right? That's right. You love me, I love you. You don't love me, I don't love you either. That's this world. The other night I was out of my yard and I saw this long string of white stuff. Boy, was it beautiful. Y'all know what it was, right? The Milky Way. And on all over the place there were stars and stars and stars and stars and stars and stars. You can't see it unless you're pitch black. And I was pitch black out with the dogs. And there were stars every place. And I said in my heart, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Because I know that the whole universe 
is watching the controversy on earth. That's right. mm -hmm. The Bible says we are spectacle. They are watching to see what we are going to do with so great a gift that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost has performed. And with that backdrop, we go to the next verse. For our conversation is in heaven. Review your life daily, monthly, yearly. Is most of your conversation in heaven or is it on all the, the pump rope that the dog that needs to be fed and so forth and so forth? It goes on and on. Where is your conversation at? You know where it's at. Come on, speak to me. It's on earth. Right? Look at your life daily, monthly, yearly. The majority of your conversation, the majority of my conversation is on earth. With so great a sacrifice and so great of a controversy we in that the angels in heaven are constantly saying, holy, 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 holy. When the last time you said holy? Giving God praise. Oh, your conversation wasn't in heaven, right? Come on, talk to me. Would you? When the last time you said it? And even if you said it, could you do it the way the angels do it? Holy, 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 holy. You know, if I keep going, y'all gonna, gonna get upset with me. <laughs> and the reason why you'll get upset with me is that you and I don't know who Jesus is and what he has done for us. We just don't sit down and think about that. But we got to meditate about these things because by beholding, we'll be changed. Now, when I read this text the other night, it says Paul was writing to his fellow saints. And he's saying that some of them ain't. They're not saints. He said, I told you often, and now I tell you even weeping. And see, that's not just a word. I said to myself, Larry, when the last time you weep because somebody wasn't doing stuff right? We might have told they wasn't doing right. We might have shown they wasn't doing right. But when was the last time you weep over a fellow uh, human that's on their way to heaven? When was the last time you weep? Are you that much concerned about their salvation that you weep? That bothered me. It took my breath. Lord, be merciful to me. I miss the mark, as the evangelicals say. I miss the mark. I don't see the salvation of all these millions of people all over here, brothers and sisters. Even in my family and in your family, we see people, we know they don't got it right, and we don't weep, we sleep good at night. Hmm. We do. I do. And I said, something's missing, God. Because we know that the end is destruction. We got to change this around. Our conversation must be in heaven. Because we look for a savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body. I love it. Because the text says, you know, I just try to keep all kinds of texts in my brain. The text says, I don't know what we shall be like. Just, just bear with me a little. You, you heard this text before. I don't know what we shall be like. But, you know, when you get that word, but, what does that mean? Things are going to change. But, when he shall appear, I want to be just like him. The goal is to be like Jesus. And that's the goal. God has loved us 
And he said, be love. The next time you call somebody, be love. Be love, I worship of all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. That's God in clear. Let's clear that up right now. God does not want people to be sick or, 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 or disease, or, and it doesn't come from him, so don't blame God. His will is that we be in health and that we always prosper in that which is good. Amen? So, in Psalms 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. I don't know where you work at or did work, but we want to know what, what kind of benefits you have. Amen. God can benefit. He says he will forgive all of thine iniquities. Not sins, iniquities. You knew what you were doing. Iniquities. And we don't read the second part of Psalms 103, 1 to 3. We believe he'll forgive us of our iniquities, but we don't believe that he can heal us of all our diseases. That's a blind spot in Christian dome. We talk about iniquity, iniquity, iniquity. What about health? God wants us to be in health. And I'll make it very simple. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, but you sowed it, your grandma sowed it, whoever sowed it, we are all reaping it. Amen? Okay. So God is just as willing today to restore the sick. Okay? And he told his disciples, go ye therefore and heal the sick. This, this is our job. Okay? He says in Matthew 10, he says, go ye therefore. In all the world, heal, not treat, not manage. Y'all didn't get that. <laughs> heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Now this next one's a tough one. Raise the dead. Now if you can't heal them, you don't need to talk about raising the dead. It takes more faith to raise the dead than to heal the sick. Amen? And so, God told the same story. You don't heal anyway. Don't let me be the first to tell you, you don't heal anyway. I am the Lord that heals thee. Exodus 15, 26, right? He says, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, do that which is I heard someone say do that which is right in his sight keep my commands and my statutes and he said and I'll take care of the rest I'll put none of these diseases upon you that I put upon the Egyptians sickness is results of transgression brothers and sisters if we don't follow God's program we get into problems that's what sickness is, okay? So that's our job. Don't forget. We are to heal the sick, cleanse the left, but we can't do it right now because we're led to see it. Hello? Led to see it means we're not hot and we're not cold and we don't believe in purgatory. So we're in a mess. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? We are in a mess. So God wants us to be in health. And he tells us, I'm going to give you a great tool for healing the sick. Anyone know what it is? I'll spell it. You close, but that's not it. James gives you a clue. The book of James, what does it say? Any afflicted? Any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church 
that they may pray. You know what prayer is like? It's like when my dad used to just about go out the door or go someplace, I would spring on him and say, Dad, you got this, you got that, or whatever. You know what we used to do growing up? We are petitioning the one in authority. And we need to see, God said, he, I love for my people to ask me for things. I want to show them that I am that I am. What do you need? I am. What should you do? I am. He's everything. <laughs> but we kind of get like Babylon a little bit. We go to everybody here and there and everywhere and ask them what they think and so forth and so forth. And when they fail us, then we call for the elders of the church. We put God last. And he still comes. Will we do the same? Mm. You know the answer. Okay. Well, that's why we got to be born again. Yeah. But only as we live in obedience to his word can we claim fulfillment of his promise. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Psalm 66, 18. Now, once again, there's a lot of kings. He said, well, I don't have to ask no for my nigga. I don't want to pray with them. I know the Lord's going to hear my prayer. That's, that's Christians today. We just don't jump into prayer. It's a serious, solemn occasion. And we got to make sure that we are meeting the standard of God if you want your prayer answered. If you, if you get a new job and an employer says you got to wear a blue hat, and you go say, I don't want to wear a blue hat. I don't want to home's purple. I'm going to wear that. What will happen? I think what will happen. You're not going to get the job. Every place you go, there's a standard. But in Christendom, all the standards have, like, disappeared. You know? Disappeared. Christians don't have no standard. We're so used to people saying, come as you are. Yes, come as you are, but when you get here, change. <laughs> it's, 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 it's unbelievable. God says, if you regard iniquity in your heart, I'm not going to hear you. Every time there's a crisis, oh, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray. But we don't check to see if there's iniquity. We just pray over everything. Pray over anything. Just pray, 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 pray. Christians have lost their standard. But guess what? I'll be the first to tell you. The Lord says, I am God and I change not. So either you come up to God's standard or you can stay where you are and be Antichrist. Amen? So, God has built a firm foundation. And he wants us as his believers to follow it. Because we got to demonstrate to the world the goodness of God by our character. But we are just like the world. You cannot see the difference between him who serveth God and him who serveth him not. The only thing we have to go by is our name, Seventh-day Adventists. But not the hearers of the law are justified. It's the doers. Standard one, can have no iniquity. If you have sinned by withholding from God his own, he the enjoyment that he has given you. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, Malachi 3.10. Hello, hello? God didn't say bring some of the tithes. Hello, hello? He said bring ye A-L-L. 
but we still got those canes out there. I, I, I ain't giving my tithes at church. No, they don't do this, they don't do that. Well, who are you going to listen to? God or you? Hello, saints, come on. Who are you going to listen to? It's time that Christians start listening to God. Bring you all the tithes into my storehouse. You didn't know it, did you? This is God's storehouse. The church is God's storehouse. For he continues, that there might be meat in my house. How are we going to go to heaven robbing God? They call them robbers in the church. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. One thing I decided years ago, I'm going to stop, stop, stop. Stop paying God on my net. I'm going to pay him on my gross. And the reason why I pay him on the gross, if I didn't have a gross, I wouldn't have a, a, a decent net. You got that one, right? It is your gross that gives you the net. So don't pay on the net. It was your gross that got you to the net. Amen? This is education time. We got to get ready for Jesus for he's coming. He's coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. All righty. Now, if you love me, Jesus said, you do what I say. If you don't love me, you can just go along with Cain and the devil and all the rest of those people. Amen? Amen. All right. Remember, God says, my word will not return to be void. Now, here's another one on health. This is taken from uh, Spiritual Gifts 4, 144. Now, some people might not know what Spiritual Gifts is. Spiritual Gifts is the gift that God has put in his church. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts unto men. And the Bible says it was first apostles. Secondary prophets, third evangelists, and northern and northern girls. You know that text real well, right? Some people have a problem with prophets, but they don't have no problem with evangelists, which is in the same verse. And it also says pastor. So if there's false prophets, what's the problem you got with the true prophets? Paul said, let the prophet speak. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 or 3. And you sit back and judge to see if what he says makes sense or is the truth. Cain's. It's time to get converted. Follow the word of God for time is running out. Here's what it says. Those who gratify their appetite and then suffer because of their intemperance and take drugs to relieve them. Let's get this next sentence. Y'all reading on the board. May be assured that God will not interpose to save health and life, which is so wretchedly peril. Many, as the brother said, as a last resort, request the prayers of the elders of the church for their restoration to health. God. Who did I say? God. God does not see fit to answer prayers offered in behalf of such. That's what the prophet says. And the prophet tells you the secrets of the kingdom. Amos 3, 7. The Lord does nothing but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So before God make a move, he tells the prophet what he's going to do. <clears throat> and so that's why God put him in the church. He put apostles, pastors, evangelists, teachers, until, what do the Bible, what's the next text say? Until what? Speak loud, speak loud. That's right. Until we come into the unity of the faith 
And Paul says we shall all speak the same thing, have the same mind, and the same judgment. For Paul says through inspiration, God is not divided. How can you have two Christians say following Jesus and they are divided? Jesus says, Father, I pray that they will be one, even as you and I are one. As long as we follow the word, guess what? If we follow the word, we will all speak the same thing, have the same mind, and the same judgment. There won't be no Babylon in the church. Babylon is confusion. Every person do that which is right in his own sight. Come out of Babylon, my people. That you don't be partakers of their sins. And that's our job. We got to call those who are in confusion. God have other sheep that are just as confused as some of us are. Hello? They are just as confused, and God wants his people to call people out of confusion. Okay? And we're not going to call to a shaky foundation. We're going to call to a firm foundation. Amen? Amen. So here's what the prophet says. It's simple. We had a big discussion about this the other night. If you go to somebody's house and say, someone pray for me to God, sure you can pray, but tell them God's condition. Let me give you a few 15 minutes or whatever. To, to, to pray to God, make sure you don't have no iniquity, no sins, and then after you've done that and I've done that, then we can offer your petition to heaven and God will, will make his decision. But we've done all that we can do. But don't just pray on the top of sin and iniquity and everything. God don't hear those prayers. And Christians do it every day. In church, I'll pray for this. Pray, pray, pray. What about the iniquity and the sin? God want to put you on the firm foundation. If you don't do what God said, you're on a shaky foundation. And in God's church, God got a firm foundation. And if we don't get on the firm foundation, we're going to be shaken out. You're going to be shaken out. Because none but the righteous shall see God in peace. Amen? Amen? I saw a little sign on the gravestone that says, rest in peace. He ain't got no choice. But she ain't got no choice. They're all going to rest in peace. It's the awakening that we want to alert them to. Oh yeah, if you die, you are going to rest in peace. But behold, the day cometh that all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth. They that have done good and they that have done evil. And once you die, it's over. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. The love, the envy, the hatred is all now perish. There's one event to all. What is that? Death is the enemy. Whether you go to church or don't go to church. Whether you sacrifice or don't sacrifice. There's one event. If you're living in this room, you should know what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9. For the living know. They don't guess. They don't think. They don't feel. They know. That if life continue, they're going the way of all the living. Okay? And so when we hear people dying around us, get sensitive, get compassionate, weep. Ask them, did they know God? Was it something I didn't do that I didn't say to them or could have said to them or so forth? It's like like when I'm about sometimes evangelizing. I got books and I and I'm it got him in my car. I might stop at the store and I go in the car. And Steve will tell me clearly, 
take a walk. No, I'm walking there anyway. Now meet the most pleasant Christian one of God's uh, Christians out there, and I got a book to give them. <laughs> Why? I did not listen to the Spirit. We should be ready at all times to give a reason of the hope that's in us. Because believe it or not, saints, you're going to meet those people again. Or you're going to meet them. We're told. Because said, you knew this and you didn't tell me? You're going to meet them. So we got to, you know, we got to wake up. Let's go on. <clears throat> So, you just can't pray over anything, you're going to meet God's standard. Okay? Now, here's a tough one. It's in the Bible. This will bring out the Bible students here today. Here's what it said. Some I saw had erred in praying for the sick to be healed before unbelievers. Y'all know the story? What Jesus did? I heard somebody say, mm hmm. Yeah, uh huh. Only one person didn't know that story. Uh, here's what it says. We should follow the example of who? Jesus. He put unbelievers out of the room and then healed the sick. So, you know what so means? Likewise. So, we should seek to be separated from, un from the unbelief of those who have not faith. You know why? You want the deep mysteries? Around all of us, there are angels, good and bad. Around the unbelievers, they have no more than you have. And when you come around, the prophet says that dark angels try to encase you into the darkness. So if you want to pray to God, you want everybody in there praying with you whose belief is in God and his way, you can have one person in there. Don't do that. The evil angels are in there. And the angels are true to their mission. They want to encase you in darkness. Oh, these are the secrets of the kingdom, saints. Okay, let's go on. I saw a company who stood well guarded and firm. Give no confidence to those who would unsettle the established faith of the body. God looked upon them with approbation. I was shown three steps. The first, second, and third angel's message. Said my accompanying angel. Who's speaking here? Ellen G. White. Okay. Ellen G. White is the pen. The author of the pen is God. The author of all the Bible were pens. And the Holy Spirit was the author. Isn't what the Bible says? Prophecy came not in old times by the will of men. The holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we don't make, we don't make a big deal of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, whoever. If the Holy Ghost inspires someone and they are a prophetess or a prophet, it is the same spirit. The same spirit who gives you the gift of tongues, gives you the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing. It is the same spirit. So we got to follow the Bible. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So God has given the seven of in this church the last, final, warning message to the world, and they are contained in Revelation 14. I had a sister help me this morning. I won't tell you what happened, but, I, but she helped me. Okay, I will. No, I can't, I can't, can't tell it now because I said I wasn't going to tell you. Okay, send my coming angel. Woe to him who shall move a block or stir a pen of these messages. God has given one to every seventh day Adventist. Once God has established what is truth, no after supposition is to be entertained. That's what the prophet says. 
But I'm going to show you how it works. I can speak real plain, you say you're gay. When God says, don't do this or don't do that, people will always say, well, what about this? What would you do with this? You heard that one, right? You heard it, right? Come on, talk to me. You heard it. And the answer is always this. Don't you think God thought about that before he gave the requirement? And here you come up and throw something that God didn't think of? Who have bewitched you? Are you listening to me, saints? You and I must stop expressing unbelief. If God said it, that settles it. Oh, I mean, if you don't want to listen to God, you really don't want to go to heaven because you're going to be listening to him when you get to heaven. Amen? Amen. I love to listen to God because he stares me through this wicked and adulterous generation down here. I know what to do and what not to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's why the Bible says, the Bible says, I'm going to paraphrase it. You saints can talk. It says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. You say so about everything else. But you can't say so when the good Lord blesses you or gives you insight into tomorrow's news. What is the problem with saints today? This is real time. What's the problem? Open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. I tell you, the Holy Ghost got a job on this planet Earth. You know, <laughs> woe to him that shall move a pen or stay up pen with these messages. But true, understanding of these messages is of vital importance. The destiny of souls hangs upon the manner in which they receive. <coughs> you know, some Christians, I tell them some things what God said and we should and should not do. You know, they said, oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I said, but you got to go and read it in the Word. I don't have to read it. I don't have to read it. I know it ain't in there. <coughs> Y'all haven't counted that too? You know what I'm talking about? If you were in the marketplace, you're going to encounter it. And what you going to do about it? The Bible gives us the answer. It says, because... They receive. You didn't have to believe it. You just didn't take it. You didn't receive it. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Are you listening to me? The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, God, not the devil, God will send them strong delusions that they may believe a lie. That they all might be damned who had pleasure in unrighteousness. So it's fearful. Don't tell nobody. Oh, I don't hear that. You ain't got to show me that. I don't hear anything in there. All you need to do is do what the Bible says. Receive it. Go home. Stay it out. And see if it is so. And this, this is the house cleaning we got to do to get ready for Jesus coming. Because Christians are in confusion. And the way you get out, it's simple. Just obey the word in season, out of season, whether you understand it or whether you don't. Just obey. To obey is better than what you're doing here, sacrifice. Amen? Just obey. I love to obey. Just do what God says. Amen? Amen. All right. I was being brought down through these messages. So I have dealing with the people God had purchased their experience. It had been obtained through much suffering and severe conflict. God had led them along step by step until he had placed them upon a solid, immovable platform. Do you know that when William Miller went forth and preached the first angel message in 1843, a lot of people got on board. 
The problem is they got on board because they were fearful. But when 1843 passed, oh, I knew when I'm a little crazy. He was crying. I could tell when he was preaching. You know, they just got back off board. Y'all seen the Persian Gulf War? They said the churches were packed. Remember Persian Gulf War? Saints, do y'all remember the Persian Gulf War? And you remember the churches were packed? And as soon as they abated, they were empty again. God don't save people who, who get on board because they're fearful. you got to understand the truth. So that's what happened in 1843, 44. The church, but the church refused to receive the first angel's message, which God allowed that to happen to test Christians. And they, they, they didn't receive it. They rejected the life from heaven and fell from the favor of God. They trusted to their own chef, and by opposing the first message, they placed themselves where they could not see the light of the second angel's message. They were left in total darkness as to the work of Jesus in the most holy place. See? Jesus, that's me, Jesus ha has a mission. And his mission is to fulfill what the earthly sanctuary did. They had the daily of repentance. Then once a year was the day of atonement. Okay? And for many centuries, the children of Israel, they offered sacrifice, and they went through this schoolmaster, as Paul calls it, tutorer. They went through this practice so that when Jesus ascended up on high, they knew by faith what he was going to do. He's going to heaven to start the process of removal of our records of sin in heaven. Daniel 8, 14 called it the cleansing of the sanctuary. And so at the end of the longest prophetic period, which we call the 2300 day period, that's what the Bible calls it, until 2000 and 300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That cleansing is a process, and Jesus started it when he left the holy place. He opened the door into the most holy place and shut the door into the holy place. You can read it. In Revelation 3, Jesus told the church of Philadelphia, and that's when it happened. At the sixth church, he says, I am he that openeth, and no man shutteth. The devil's been trying to open up the first apartment since Jesus closed it. Because if he could open it up, the seven-day Sabbath wouldn't be a test. But when he opened that door into the most holy place, where the Shekinah glory is and the two angels and God the Father's throne and inside the ark is the Ten Commandments. As soon as Jesus opened the door, the light from his Ten Commandments shine out. And the only question on the agenda was, the Christian world keeps nine commandments, but there's one thou lackest. And that one is to do exactly what Jesus told them to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. So he's not going to test you on lying and killing and cheating. He's going to test you, are you going to remember the Sabbath day? And the reason why he's going to test you on the Sabbath day, the Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath, is the seal of God. Amen. It is the only commandment that tells you whose authority is given this law. Amen. It's like a seal. The government can make all kinds of decrees he wants, but until he put that seal on there, it's not authentic. So God has put his seal on the Ten Commandments. Amen. And God is going to test the whole world. But it's called backdoor gospel. He's going to test the world through what is called the mark of the beast. The devil thinks it's going to force everyone to receive his false day Sunday 
But by trying to force his false day Sunday, God's going to pour out his Holy Spirit on his people, and they're going to enlighten the whole earth, according to Revelation 18. Another angel come down, and he could do the same thing that we should be doing. He cried with a mighty voice. He didn't give a loud squeak. He gave a loud cry. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the home of every unclean and hateful bird. Come out of her, my people. That's the job God has given us. And we are to go out and find those other sheep that are not in this fold and tell them, I like this part, tell them what the God in heaven told us. The God in heaven said, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Them too I must bring. Hello? Do you love those other sheep? Do you love them? We gotta get active and get out there and tell them that Jesus is coming again. And he said you are out here someplace and we are out here looking for you. Amen? Amen. I have other sheep that are not in this fold. Them two others bring. Now here's the best part. I say the best to last. I mean the words say the best to last. I didn't say it. But here's what it said. And no man can pluck them out of my hand. That makes your job very easy. You can stop playing the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want them to see this? You want them to see that? No, you ain't got to do that. Just go out there and tell what Jesus said. If they got sheep, they ain't hear it. If they not got sheep, they ain't going to hear them out what you said. Hello? We got too many people wanting to be the Holy Ghost. I used to be, I, was, I used to have that, that, that occupation. <laughs> want to be the Holy Ghost. You know? We're UPS, we drop the package on the doorstep, and then we stand by to see whether they're going to get it or they're going to open it up. That's your business. God's going to take care of that. Your job is to deliver the good news. Whether they accept it or not. Stop waiting around for the see when they're going to open the package. You're going to cover three more doors or three more people while you're watching to see this one person you deliver the package to. Amen? Amen. But beloved of God, they were oppressed. They gave the second angel's message. Babylon is falling, is falling. She's not completely falling yet. When she forces all the world to receive the Sabbath of the Pope of Rome, then Babylon will be completely fall. Do you know the United States is, you know, the greatest country in the world, according to Revelation 13 11, the Bible says the lamb like beast is going to do everything that the first beast before it did. Well, the first beast before it was a persecuting church. And you will see it. Do you know as I speak right now, you probably, you should be tracing down the property. You should know where you are in property. As I speak, do you know the United States is debating, is discussing a digital currency? That you, you know that. You, you're on top of this, right? Right now as we speak. You know why? Cash is going to come to an end. You and I are going to get a currency that's digital. And you, you should know by now. It's been coming for years. But it's right here at your doorstep. And when the decree goes forth, the Bible says, gold and silver and money are going to be thrown in the street. You know why? It's no longer legal tender. Now the government has your number, and everything you buy, everything you don't buy, they know. And, and now, this administration has put up two new offices. You know what they are? The Office of this information, the government is now going to tell you what is right speech and what is wrong speech. And the Office of Climate Control. Two offices? Well, 
The fear of John F. Kennedy, the American people had a fear. How many people remember the fear of John F. Kennedy? They was concerned whether he should be president because he's Catholic. Yeah. They said, we're concerned whether you're going to follow the Constitution yeah. or your church. But well, we are realizing it in this administration. If you don't know what's going on, right before the American people eyes and the world, the United States is being demised, right in front of you. The beast is setting up the beast headquarters right in America, right before your eyes, because it's going to fulfill Bible prophecy. He causes all to receive a mark that no man may buy or sell, save he that has the mark or the name or the number or worship the image. Do you know who they are? Who is the beast? The papacy has always been the same person that Martin Luther dealt with. Can you imagine a church who's been around for 1260 years? You can imagine that. But the Bible predicted that from 538 to 1798, when they received his deadly wound, it would rule the conscience of men. Anybody ever seen this book? Every Seventh-day Adventist should have read this book by now. It's called 50 Years in Church of Rome. A former priest tell you the inside story. Hello? But the only reason why I read it, he says the same thing that the Bible says. Hello? I'm going to read a few seconds of it, but here's the thing you have to see. I'm going to read it. That's why I won't mess it up. This is on page 281. You can Google it and get it online. In 1852, the bishops had a meeting and plotted a goal. They did not know that they were fulfilling Bible prophecy. Are you, are you with me? Here's what it says. We are determined to take possession of the United States. Catholicism has a goal to take the United States over. Protestants don't know, don't have a clue because they don't protest no more. They don't know, they don't have a clue of what's going on. They call it a conspiracy theory. call it whatever you want to call it. But God, through our prophetess, she says, in the time in which we live, God, God has called his people and has given them a message to expose the wickedness of the man of sin. How are people going to expose the wickedness of the man of sin? They don't know anything. And you know it's true. They haven't studied to show themselves approved. How are you going to get the latter rain if God can't use you? He don't want to just pour his latter rain on you and you don't know nothing. Here it is. I'm going to read it to you. We are determined to take possession of the United States, but we must move, proceed with extreme secrecy and wisdom. What does a skillful general do when he wants to conquer a country? Does he go out in the farmland? No. He said he marched straight to the powerful cities. So it is with us. Solemnly and patiently, we must mass our Roman Catholics in the great cities of the United States. You want to know why there's a southern border? How long will it take you to understand that most of those people who come across have the name of the beast in their forehead? Why are they coming over? They are coming over to take your house, your car, your possession, all that stuff. Anyone who protests against the man of sin. You can read in early writings, he says, this house is proscribed, for you have spoken against our holy order. The day is coming, saints, we know, that you will not be able to buy or sell at any price 
unless you worship the beast, his image, receive his mark, or his name, or his number. And it's right on your doorstep. And where's our minds? Are we ready? Are we ready? I walked out in my little garden yesterday, and I said, this little stuff I got here won't last me three months. I'm serious. And God told this church hundreds of years ago, get out of the city, into the country, for in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a serious one. Let them raise their own produce. Are we there, saints? You who call yourself seven events, are you there? Well, I can tell you something. I thought it was going to be a slam dunk. Hello? But since I've been out there for a year now, in Arizona, in the little farm out there, I tell you, praise God for the Lord. It takes a while to get ready. It takes a while. And I thought me being from New Jersey, oh, I just throw a few seeds out there and boy, it just spring up. Don't happen. Because out here, the soil is like rock. <laughs> so I got to be born again. I got to learn all new skills. And brother, I see the, I see the crisis coming. And I, was, I just made a faint. I said, thank God for the fruit trees. <laughs> thank God for the fruit trees. Uh, even if I don't plant them every year, they might come, they will bring forth fruit, even though they might, they might be a little warm. I need a little warm food. I'm just saying, saints, that the good Lord loved us so much that he taught us tomorrow's news so that we can get ready. Because we're about to go home. But we're not going to go home before we defeat the devil. And we're going to defeat him in the time of trouble. Not the tribulation. We don't use that term because that term is past. That was the dark ages. Daniel 12, 1 says there shall be a time of trouble. Matthew said, immediately at the tribul tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give his light and the stars shall fall from heaven. But the stars fell in 1833. So don't be like the Jews, get your party all confused because you will run into the same problem that the Jews ran into. They thought when Jesus come, he's going to crush the Romans and da 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 da. He didn't. He was coming to die. They got their prophecy confused. And unfortunately, many Seventh-day Adventists have their prophecy confused. They forget that we're on a firm foundation. And God says, not a pin or a peg is to be stirred. Are you listening to me, saying? Steady to show yourself approved. And what God has established as truth, no as a supposition is to be entertained. Last paragraph. After Jesus opened the door of the most holy, the light of the Sabbath was seen, and the people of God were tested, and the children of Israel were tested anciently to see if it will keep God's law. I saw the third angel pointing upward, showing the disappointed ones the way to the holiest of the heavenly sanctuary. As they by faith into the most holy, they find Jesus, and the hope and the joy sprung up anew. I saw them looking back, the of the past. From the proclamation of the second advent of Jesus down to their experience to the passing of the time in 1844. They see their disappointment explained and joy and certainty again animates them. The third angel has lightened up the past, the present, and the future, and they know that God has indeed led them. You know it was God's will that there should be a great disappointment. Hello? Because he needs a weed out. All the kings and all the doubters and all those people who didn't have faith. They could not explain it. But the true believers, even though they could not explain it, they said, well, I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord says this, he can't fail. I'm going to stay right here. 
until further light comes. But I'm not going to lose faith. We are so quick to give up our faith when things doesn't come when we expect them. You know the prophet says, let me tell you. I like the way the prophet is speaking. He said, let me tell you. God is going to work in ways that is entirely, entirely, what's the next word? Anybody know the quote? Entirely contrary, contrary to any human planning. You hear what I said? God, God's not going to perform the way you think because he's not a human. Because you don't understand what I just quote. But, here's that word again. But, it will be seen that he is taking the reins in his hand. Do you know, if God were to leave this evangelistic thrust or get this message out to the world, it would take a millennium for us to get it out the way we are going. You hear what I'm saying? It will take a millennium. So the author and finish of our faith told the prophet, I'm going to take the reins. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to take the reins, and I am going to work entirely. Y'all know what entirely means? Entirely contrary. You know what contrary means? You don't think like you think. You don't think like I think. But it will be seen. Oh, if, you, if, if you're watching, if you're keeping up, if you if you got the mind of Jesus in your mind, you are watching and praying that you don't be deceived. You will see that, hey, God, God is doing this. God is, he's taking the reins. And he's going to work with us to finish this work. Okay? But here's the bad part. He wants everybody in here on his team. But he can't use people who don't know the place. Hello? Right now, we are huddle, huddle, huddle. We have a huddle. We're trying to get all on the same page. Okay? But God can't use you if you don't know what he has said. You need to get a master in what must I do, Lord? Here am I, Lord. Send me. I mean... I wanted to bring my charts today. You know, I used those little places about the chart. It's gonna change, but you got to know those charts. They were here before I was born, many, many, many years ago. But you know what? It's just like when my dad was born, 1912. He was born one month after the Titanic sank, and the Titanic had warning, and they ignored it. They said before the ship left, and I think, and I always say that's why I, that shit went down. They say, even God can sink this ship. Y'all heard that, right? Well, they shot themselves in the foot. Because God used a, a little simple iceberg and just ripped the side of that ship. And that ship went down in two hours. Went down in two hours. And that's sad. Because you and I get warning after warning. And sometimes we ignore it. God means what he says and he says to me. Now, I don't know who's in this audience, but there might be someone here who wants to give their heart to Jesus. Amen? Now, remember, it's not by words, it's by faith. But you want to, from this day going forward, you want to give your life to Jesus. And this is how you do it. All you have to do it says, by the grace of God, Lord, whithersoever you lead me, I will follow. That's all you got to do. And it says, God, not only do I want to follow you, I want to join God's only true remnant church. Okay? And so if that's your desire, would you raise your hand? Okay. Well, I was, oh, everyone who raised your hand, uh, get in touch with Elder up here. Elder, raise your hand. 
Get in touch with him, and he can take you forward. But we are in the last days, and God is gathering his people. Hello, you got to see it. We're in the gathering time. God is gathering his people, and his people are going to come together. The world's coming together. The corporations are coming together. Everybody's coming together. What's wrong with God's people? They're still doing that which is right in their own sight. It's time to press together. Let me give you a, a, a real quick statement as I close. Do you know when the mark of the beast come out, you and I won't be able to buy or sell at any price? So you might want to know what this brother or that sister does or whatever, because you might need their help if you plan to go to heaven. All of God's people are going to be together. And the word says, every, every support is going to be withdrawn from us because the dragon is mad with the woman. And she went to make war with the remnant of her seed. In case you didn't know, that's who we are. We are the last part of those people who keep the commands of God and have the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. That's, you know, if it weren't for the spirit of prophecy, we'd be Babylon. Okay? But God has given us tomorrow's news today. Okay? Now, you're going to see it as we go forward. That woman, who all those many years who was faithful, she falls. The next time you see that woman, you know where you're going to see her at? Over here in Revelation 12, she was a true woman until October the 22nd, 1844. When she rejected the first angel's message, she fell. She couldn't be benefited by the second. You see that woman again in Revelation 7. She's called a whore. Those churches that rejected the first angel's message, they become Babylon. Take the seven minutes out, move them out of the way. All those churches out there, they all saying different stuff, doing this, that, so forth and so forth. But here's what the Bible says. First John 2. If any man say they know him and keepeth not his commandments, they are liars. How are you gonna say you know Jesus don't keep his commandments? If you reject his commandments, you reject the author of the commandments. Are you listening to me? So you and I get to retool our definition. If anyone say they know Jesus and walk in darkness, the Bible says they are liars. If anyone says they know Jesus and don't keep his commandments, the Bible says they are liars. But Revelation 6, 12 says, Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Praise God, I am in a commandment-keeping church that also know what God is going to do, has done, and will do. So we thank God for those who decided today I'm going to renew my vow. I want to serve the Lord all the way. Okay? you got to get this book because it tells you the day is near where the genuine will rule every aspect of your life. Get ready to show the character of God. They're going to spit in your face and call you best of all. They're not going to choose right. You're going to choose wrong. And God needs us to show his character. What did Jesus do in closing? He says, let you treat Jesus wrong. He did two things that we got to learn. He didn't say a moment word. That's a hard for us. Keep your mouth closed. He didn't say a moment word, but he did say something. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let me paraphrase it. He says, Father, forgive them. For if they know what I know, they wouldn't have done it. Let us pray. 
Father God, we thank you for what you have done, what you is doing, and what you shall do. We ask you to be with each person here. You know that needs. We ask you to bless them. Bless this church. Bless this community. Lord, and help us to heed your counsel. Help us to buy of you gold, tried in the fire and raiment, and eye salve, so we can see that you're about to come, and we need to be ready, and we need to help to the best of our ability, our family and our sons and our daughters and our associates. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Lord, we also ask that you would bless the food, and even if it's blessed again, we know that you're in charge. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen.